Hi, this is Ian Stewart from Photon Mastering. And in this video, I'd like to give you a quick run through of some of the additional improvements in WaveLab 12. Now, when I first saw the new product specification for WaveLab 12, I was absolutely blown away. To give you an idea, it comes in at over 80 pages of new features and improvements. So we obviously can't cover everything in any great detail without being here for hours or maybe even days. And as such, this is going to be a bit of a whistle stop tour, but I want to at least give you a taste of what's included. So let's get into it. To start, let's look at updates to the audio montage. First, we now have a function to replace the audio files for multiple clips in a single unified action. This is great when you either get updated mixes or need to swap out main mixes for instrumental or acapella versions. And you can find this in the clips tab under the functions menu. If we move over to the album tab, we'll find another enhancement. Previously, this button would just play back CD track starts, but now it will play back both title starts and ends. This is really nice during album sequencing to verify spacing, listen to fades and level transitions between songs, etc. If you like to make use of the text exports for markers, files, or clips, those dialog boxes have been improved with options for labels, output destination, and post-generation actions, including copying the text straight to the clipboard and bypassing intermediary files. If we move to our file tab, we've got a new file open modality for those times when a plugin is misbehaving and preventing you from opening and working on a montage. This open and safe mode option just opens a montage with all of the plugins deactivated and can really be a lifesaver for troubleshooting and eliminating problematic plugins. Additionally, we've got some new preferences, one of which is a plugin warm-up option, which can help with plugins that need to have a short amount of audio samples run through them before they fully kick in. Another new preference is to show a vertical time grid when clip rulers are turned on. We also have a clip side cue marker that can be shown or hidden in the preferences. And when we flip to the montage timeline, we can see it indicates when a clip start or end position has been adjusted. Staying on the timeline, we have a new right click menu option. That's an extension of the copy clips to track functionality. And this is copy raw clips to the active track. This copies the clips without any plugins or automation. So it can save you a step when you're populating a reference track with the flat versions of your tracks for AB comparison. Another function that's available on timeline clips along with the inspector and clip functions menu is the ability to deactivate and activate all plugins for a clip, track, group, or the montage output. This can be very useful when you're conserving CPU resources as you work through a project. To improve parity with the audio editor, we also now have a DB ruler that can be turned on for audio montage tracks. And if we have automatic zoom to peaks turned on, the new ruler will automatically update with the vertical scale. Up above the ribbon, there's also a new context info bar that has been added for moving and resizing clips, and it indicates single key shortcuts that can be invoked during a move or resize procedure to modify its behavior. For those of you who like to record directly into a montage, a new feature has been added to stop recording when the playhead reaches a selected marker rather than either the next or final marker. Uh, back on the topic of plugins, for track plugins, there's an option in the track header to bypass all plugins. There's also a new shortcut to make the clip under the edit or playback cursor active, which will focus its plugins in the inspector's clip tab. You can access this with the exclamation mark or by clicking here. Then there are a few updates that apply to envelope points. They can now snap to the time ruler, markers, the edit cursor and time selection edges. And you can also move the edit cursor to a specific envelope point. Additionally, if we move up to the ribbon, we've got some navigation tools to move through envelope points sequentially. Also in the envelope ribbon, we've got two new actions to quickly lower the gain of a time selection by either six or nine dB. In the edit ribbon under auto grouping, you can turn on an option to include reference tracks, which can be helpful to keep your reference track clips time aligned with your mastered tracks. We've also got a new render path option that will save the render path with the montage. So when you switch between montages, this path will be updated automatically. 
Then if we switch our focus to the inspector, you'll see we have explicit pre and post effects gain faders at each stage. This makes gain staging through your montage much easier, faster, and just more intuitive. There are also a few color coding improvements. For example, you may have noticed that the plugin title bars are color coded depending on which section of the signal path they're inserted in, corresponding to the inspector tab colors. And back in the ribbon, there's also a view option to assign random colors to selected clips. Okay, that's just the montage. So <laughs> take a little breather here and then let's move on to what's new in the audio editor. First, when using the gain process in the audio editor, you can choose whether to apply the default fade from the global audio preferences and whether that should be inside or outside your audio range selection. We also have a new autoplay feature in the spectrum editor that will play your edits immediately after you make them using the current pre and post roll settings. Like the clip time grid in the montage, you can also right click on the time ruler in the editor to display a time grid over the main display. You can also show an overlay of the waveform on top of the spectrogram and wavelet views, and you can toggle it on and off by just double clicking the scroll wheel. If you'd like to customize the color, you can do that via the new spectrogram setting window. We also have a few new features that apply to both the montage and audio editor. So you can tailor the appearance of the playback and edit cursor, including color, blink rate for the edit cursor, and a new trail display for the playback cursor. You can also now simultaneously make a selection and zoom by holding the shift key while selecting to enable the zoom function. Additionally, if you want to make a quantized time selection, you can hold Alt or Option while hovering the mouse over the time ruler and drag to make a selection quantized to the current major grid marks. Lastly, you can overlay an RMS display of the waveform, which gives a good idea of its loudness by scrolling this wheel. And like the waveform overlay in the spectrogram, you can toggle it on and off by double clicking. Okay, we're nearly there. A few things in the batch processor. The audio analyzer plugin in the batch processor can now report the total RMS loudness and the duration of digital silence during the head and tail of a file. You can also add master section plugins to the current batch processor just via drag and drop, or even add the entire master section plugin chain with this new button. And lastly, the loudness meta normalizer and meta leveler batch plugins have been enhanced to match the new loudness features of the montage meta normalizer. For content creators, there's an option to display your mouse activity and modifier keys on screen, as you may have noticed in this video. And you can export YouTube and Spotify compatible chapter files based on markers in either audio files or a montage. And additionally, we've now got support for the Opus codec, both for import and export. And very lastly, on the productivity home stretch, we've got over a thousand new tooltips to help guide you through WaveLab, an option to ignore all VST2 plugins, an option to display a second instance of the timecode window, a new refresh folder content button in the file browser, a reveal in Finder Explorer post render option, color coding for tabs to indicate an unsaved state, an insert option in the plugin menus, a new custom sample block time ruler, the ability to import markers from a CSV file, and the option to turn on and off auto hiding for slide out windows. So those are most of the other miscellaneous improvements and new features in WaveLab 12. If this was helpful, we'd love it if you gave this video a like, and certainly take a look in the manual for more detail on all of these. This really was just a quick overview. If you head on over to the WaveLab channel, we've got more videos on other new features in WaveLab 12, plus tutorials, the Pro Workflows live stream series with Justin Perkins, and all sorts of other good content for you to check out. So go ahead and subscribe. If you'd like to be notified when there are new videos, you can also ring the bell and you'll be the first to know when they're available. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.